Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another episode of The Sit Rep. And I am proud to announce my guest for this evening's episode, the iconic Stan Bush. Stan, how are you doing this evening, sir? Doing great. How's it going? Uh, going very well. Sitting there, sitting back, relaxing, waiting for this impending snowstorm that we're supposed to get this weekend. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. <laughs> so, eh, winter in West Virginia, what are you going to do? Well, first off, I want to thank you so much for agreeing to meet with me on the channel. As I said earlier, you have been a big part of my life since 1986. I have constantly listened to your music up until today. Your music is in my Jeep and I listen to on the way to work. So oh. I, I really appreciate this. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for the support. No, not a problem, sir. Now, for everybody watching, uh, how this is going to work, like my normal sit reps, I have 10 questions here for Stan, though they're a little different than the questions I normally ask uh, my viewers. So I'm going to go over my 10 questions, and then if we have any time left, I'll try to get answer some questions that you guys may have in the chat. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started, if you're ready, sir. Yep, yep. All right, well, question number one. I have been a huge fan of yours since 1986 when I first heard you announce the arrival of Optimus Prime in Transformers the movie. What's it like being so well known for the song The Touch, even 35 years later, I guess 36 years later now? Uh, it's been a really cool ride. I mean, uh, people tell me that that song had an impact on their life, you know, and really good stuff, positive stuff, you know, maybe hey, we're having a tough time of it. And, uh, you know, the song helped, helped them, you know, some in some way, you know, inspire them or whatever. And uh, anyway, um, it's very humbling to hear that stuff, you know, and uh, I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. I told Stan earlier behind the scenes, when I first rolled into Baghdad, I had one little earpiece and I played the touch as we crossed that border, just kind of psyching myself up. So, like I said, big, big part of my life. Now, question number two, most of my viewers know you from Transformers the movie. Can you tell us a little, about, a little bit about where your career has taken you since then, and what is some of your proudest achievements? Um, well, let's see. The, around the time of the touch, uh, when we recorded that back in 86, uh, there were a couple of other things I did. The uh, first two Jean-Claude Van Damme movies, I sang three songs in each of those movies. Uh, blood sport and kickboxer and so those were uh you know some other stuff that i did that that's still sort of getting uh people still know me from that stuff and uh anyway during the uh 90s and all all up until now i i've been doing albums i just uh just released the the newest one is uh number 14 so i've been yeah dare to dream <laughs> that's it upside down. <laughs> it's good upside down too <laughs> yeah um Anyway, the during the 90s, of course, you know, the rock music kind of imploded for a bit. The 80s rock stuff that I do um, sort of went away when the grunge thing came. But uh, anyway, it seems to be back in a big way. And uh, what's cool is, you know, how the touch and the Transformers, it sort of became more of a big, a bigger phenomenon later. It, uh, you know, there was like a resurgence of, uh, of you know, people into the, the the whole transformers thing and of course the bay films and all the uh other ones and the, the latest one bumblebee you know, used the touch again and so that was pretty cool but yeah and then the touch has been in a bunch of other stuff uh you know boogie nice was mark Wahlberg singing it so uh anyway yeah a lot of good stuff it's been a a, a real cool ride it's it's um whenever i do a show a concert um europe or, or here in the states uh yeah, I can't do a show without playing the touch. <laughs> you know, that's the closer. That's the, you know, and uh, people love the song. It's it's a really, it's a cool song. It's a great message. And it, it sort of started off a whole uh, series of, of songs like that, that um, I don't know, it, it almost became a calling 
for me to sing stuff that sort of helps maybe uh, inspire, you know, give give hope. And of course, it's been a crazy year, past year for everyone. And, uh, you know, we need a little, little positivity, I think, in the world. Oh, yes, sir. Kato's on here and he just said, yes, they use the touch in the show, the Goldbergs too. So I've oh, recently yeah. discovered that on Hulu. That is a great show. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. I love hearing stories like that. All right. Question number three kind of ties into what you just talked about. One of the things I love about your music is how uplifting and motivating it is. And uh, of course I just went into, I already told you that about going into our Baghdad, but with the uplifting sound that you do or you have, was that your plan when you started out or did it just evolve that way? It just kind of evolved that way. Um, like I said, um, the touch, a lot of things started happening for me uh, around that time. Uh, people heard the, I, I start, started becoming known as a singer and did a lot of stuff in LA uh, commercials like Toyota trucks and Coors beer. I was doing a lot of big stuff back then and, singing on other albums like, you know, Alice Cooper and Jefferson Starship. Anyway, it was, uh, it was a pretty cool time, you know, being uh, called for a bunch of stuff. And they were like, I don't know, maybe four or five of us rock singer guys, you know, the beer voice, the big, you know, that did most of the, the big, the big commercials back then. Um, but yeah, it, it, as far as the, the inspirational side though, it's uh, th there were e each album I've done since then, there's been you know two or three those of those kind of songs and i don't know i have this philosophy that you know each of us creates our, our own reality i mean we're, we have more power way more power than we than we ever realize you know we can to to make uh something happen and uh, bring bring about good stuff in the world and i don't know i mean i don't i don't always get there but it's uh it's something nice to aspire to you know i think definitely what is uh Mythbusters, Adam Savage would always say, I reject your reality and submit my own. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right. Question number four. As a veteran, I really have to commend you for the song Unstoppable. Any artist who creates a song as a tribute to the troops gets my utmost respect. Did you have any particular motivation when doing that song? Yeah, actually, uh, my co-writer and friend, uh, Lenny Macaluso, we wrote that one together. And it was inspired initially by the, the Boston bombing, actually, uh, how uh, people kind of came together and this, this sort of whole new uh, spirit emerged from that tragedy, you know, and it, it uh, I don't know if you noticed in the, in the music video for Unstoppable, there's, there's people jogging and that, uh, that's, that's in Boston, that, that little clip from that. Oh, neat. Yeah, that 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 uh, marathon. But yeah, it was uh, unstoppable. Was a really cool video because it was basically uh, a statement about the country and how you know we've we've weathered so much together as a country. And uh, I, I you know I love this country and I know you do too. And uh, thanks so much for your service. I I said that before, but I'll say it again. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. So you know, it's just uh, I think it's it's a great thing. I mean to to shout out, hey, you know, America's a great place. Definitely. We got to get that song on the air right now. <laughs> we got <laughs> we got to get everybody together again. Yeah, yeah, exactly because when we when we unite, we are we really are unstoppable, you know. I will never forget September 12th. That was the day I was proudest to be an American. You couldn't go anywhere without seeing, you know, the American flag flying everywhere and it was just such a sense of unity like like you said you, you know we all came together with this tragic event and i was so proud to be an american then and now look at us now i mean we've got to come together and that's one thing i got to commend the transformers community for i have met so many great people through those plastic robots back there and nobody cares what your political beliefs are where you come from none of that you like plastic robots you're cool in my book no, you're you're exactly right. Some of the nicest people I've ever met in my life have been at the conventions, and people come up, and they're just awesome people. I uh, really, I got to say that. I mean, just some of the most wonderful people. They have these, you know, stories about things, and they say stuff like, you know, soundtrack to my childhood, and you know, different things. What <laughs> I got a fan letter from a little kid one time, and he 
you know, he was young, obviously a kid, you know, but he said something. He told me in the letter, he says, you're my biggest fan. <laughs> you know, he had it back. <laughs> so that That's <was> great. <laughs> okay, so you're losing myself. Oh, this, this one ties into something you just said. I'm glad you said this earlier. I am also a huge Alice Cooper fan. Uh, and so is my son, Dylan. We actually took him to his first concert last November, and we took a six-year-old, he was five then, to an Alice Cooper concert. Awesome. He was actually dressed as Alice. He had the makeup, the hat, leather jacket, and everything. Uh, you mentioned you performed with him. Do you remember what song or album that was? Um, it it was on, it wasn't a performance, but it was singing on the album itself, the recording. Um, and I don't remember which, the, the title of the album, uh, but it was in, would have been uh, late 80s, early 90s, probably. Um, That's uh, probably when he got his resurgence, because I remember his Poison yeah, album came yeah, out. Yeah. With, uh, the, the, one, Poison. The, the one with Wayne's World, was that it? Um, I don't remember. Was, uh, the song hey, called Centipede was on there, that that song. Okay. That, yeah. So maybe you can tell me which album that is. <laughs> I, I'll go dig, and I've got his entire library right here on no, the computer. Yeah. He's very nice. He's a very, very good guy, a uh, real solid person. I understand he's quite quite the golfer, too. So I don't yes, play sir. golf. Yeah. But he was very nice to me. Yeah, it was so funny. I mean, my, my son just absolutely loved Alice Cooper, and we had the opportunity to take him to a concert, and everybody thought we were nuts. Some people thought we were nuts, and th some people thought we were the greatest parents ever. <laughs> oh, oh, right, right. I'll, have to send, I'll send you a picture of him in his costume here later on. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving on to question number seven. Now, my math may be wrong. I figured that this is your twelfth so solo album. Uh, let's see. Uh, there were two in the eighties. The the one the first one was on CBS Records, and it just has my name. Uh, then the second one was the Stan Bush and Barrage, which had the Touch on there. And then uh, I can name them all, but um, but there were. Um, the thing is, though, that it makes it a little bit uh, sort of debatable is a couple of the albums during the 90s were sort of like collections or whatever, or compil compilations. So they weren't, you know, they had songs that were already out on other records. So it was sort of a, you know, wasn't like one we recorded a new album from the ground up. And uh, there were also one that was released in Japan that had a couple of different songs but it had the same had a different title than the one that released in the rest of the world so you know that kind of stuff and uh that's why it's it's a little bit up in the air but uh there should be 14 i have 12 listed on stanbush.com and they're all available of course i guess where i got my information <laughs> oh, okay i've been so, researching you heavily no the the two that aren't on there are the first two and that's because i don't own the rights to those that's why okay. they're no, no, I mean, you know, the rest of them, I own the masters. So, you know, that's why they're available on stanbush.com. Excellent. Well, I totally lost what I was going to ask about this. Uh, let's see. Oh, I was just going to say, what can you tell us about this one? This is your brand new album. As you can see, I got the autographed copy. Yeah. And this was just released in November, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That, okay. uh, it's brand new. Um, yeah. Dare to dream. Uh, was written most most of it of it was in 2020. There were a couple of songs that were from the 2019, like the the uh, one of the singles, one of the songs called the 80s. It was a song about 80s rock, and that was released in uh, as a single in the summer of uh, 2019. And uh, it's uh, the music video has has my son as a young me in the video. And uh, anyway, it's a song about 80s music and thinking back about being a kid and how, you know, how music gets you back in time. So that's kind of how that, with that song. And then later that year, there were a couple of other ones that, that I wrote and recorded. And then, but nearly the whole album, the whole rest of the album was all uh, written and recorded during the pandemic, which, oh uh, yeah, it was a, the, the COVID thing was a bad thing and, and, you know, hard on a lot of people and my heart goes out to everybody who suffered uh, but if there was one silver lining for me and my producer is that's all we did was work on the album for most of the year. So it, it was actually a good time creatively. Um, I think some of the best songs I've ever written uh, were from this past year. So uh, real happy with the album. It's getting great reviews. Uh, 
it, it was named number number ten uh, for, of the uh, album of the year for album. Yeah. yeah, so that was pretty cool to hear. And uh, but yeah, Dare to Dream is the title track. Um, has a a floating like a yeah like a ship that's floating in through the air. Uh, like uh, anyways, kind of a surreal cover. But you know, there's a, a kid like a, a a teenager guy, younger guy standing on the hill or the mountain or the rock or whatever, looking up at this, you know, dreamscape, basically he's, he's dreaming this stuff. And, and it's, it's, it's also kind of goes into what we were talking about before, how, you know, whatever you can dream or, you know, it's just like the song dream big is the same message where, you know, you think of stuff that you, you know, want to achieve, like follow your dreams and, and reach for stuff, you know, and uh, you know, the, uh, you you pretty much have a limitless potential as, as as a human, you know. When when you dare to dream, I mean, it's just to be <laughs> try to be uncorny, but you know what I mean. It's, like, it, it's a, well, it's funny. Uh, I told you earlier we're, we've been listening to that uh, Dream Big a lot lately, and my son he really likes it too. And I was telling him because there's a line in about the father telling the son Dream mm-hmm. Big, That's and right. I was explaining to him. I said, "Don't let anything stop you. Go be." whatever you want to be. He is so hardcore set mm-hmm. on being an adventurer mm-hmm. that owns a gummy bear factory. But you know, if that's what you want to do. <laughs> yeah, no, it's cool. It's that's, that's the way we need to, to tell our kids, you know, to, <clears throat> like all of my kids are college graduates and stuff. And so I'm real, I couldn't be prouder. And it's just one of those things, you know, that you, I think all of us, we want the best for our children and, and so forth. My kids are all grown now, but, you know what I'm saying. I even have a grandbaby. Uh, she's uh, she turned one year old is three two days before Christmas. So, well, anyway. congratulations. My son was my 40th birthday surprise. <laughs> oh, good. That's great. I remember right. running into a friend of mine at the post office, and he was bragging about his daughter just going off to college. We graduated together. He's dra- bragging about his daughter going to college, and I was like, "Well, my son did something good too." And he said, "What?" He said, "Learn to walk." <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. So well, I did not share my questions with you whatsoever. But my question number eight was: I have to tell you, the '80s has become one of my favorite songs. I listen to it almost daily since it was first released. What can you tell us about that song? And you've already answered that. It's already, kind of already. Yeah, it's hard when you don't know what the questions are coming. Uh, not to, to to spoil the thing, but yeah, it's like I say. I think a little bit of that was maybe partially inspired by the summer of 69. Cause you know, that's, you know, he, he, Brian Adams, great song, by the way, my, that was one of the best songs ever. Uh, and, but that's about looking back and, you know, when they were, when they were kids and, you know, and uh, it, it, it's just, like I say, the music, just like a time machine, it takes you back. And uh, the other thing in the music video, I didn't mention, uh, rented, I rented a VW bus cause uh, you know, that's what the, my 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 son and a couple of buddies that have a band in the in the video, they were and a and a hot girl, you know, they they were like uh, in the VW bus and it was like, you know, kind of like looking back. I mean, I had one of those in high school. <laughs> so, yeah. I've got an interesting story about a VW bus. When I was growing up, my mom and dad they had they both had a Beetle, dad mm-hmm. had a blue one, mom had a yellow one, Bumblebee, and then they had the VW bus. And yeah. in the mid seventies. My car seat was a playpen bolted to the floor of that VW bus. So I'm just bouncing around like a pinball. <laughs> <Isn't it? laughs> That's great. Yeah, my dad made made it into a camper. He built a little thing on top that pops up a tent kind of thing. And it's funny because a couple of years after he made that, and we went up counting, camping in the in the mountains, uh, North Carolina. Uh, he a couple of years after that, that's when VW came out with a camper van that had very similar design to what he came up with. So that was pretty cool. You know, he, he kind of built it himself. So, you know, he, well, he did build it. So it was That's a awesome. awesome. Yeah, it's a cool thing. Now talking about the eighties, we were talking about the song, the eighties, and I don't have this question down, but I actually thought of it after I wrote everything. Okay. Another thing I love so much about your music, it maintains that eighties sound. I mean, you listen to Dare to Dream, and then you pop in the Transformers movie soundtrack. The music is, it's the same. It has that same, I guess, tempo, if you will. And I love that. Is that something also that you're just like, hey, I am an 80s guy, and that's what I'm going to stick with? 
Pretty much. <laughs> I, I love that because I'm sitting there. Uh, yeah. I'm listening to this work too. And they're like, oh, is that an old song? No, that's a brand new song, but it just has that 80s. That 80s. I, I love anything my, 80s. My producer, um, he's an 80s child too. You know, guy, my best friend, he, he grew up in Germany, but uh, he's been in America for a long time. But uh, he's just amazing. The guy plays guitar great. And uh, he's a great studio engineer and plays keyboards and everything. So he, he and I work together, but uh, he's he's quite quite talented, so he helps put those tracks together. And like you know, I was talking with a buddy of mine, that, you know, if you if you did tracks like of that quality back then, it, it, you would have spent a hundred grand doing a record like this, you know. And uh, anyway, but you know, home studios, you can do stuff cheaper now. And but he he's got, you know, he's really it's, if you know what you're doing, and he he does he does he's he's very talented. So. Now you're talking about the home studios. In the video of the '80s, I know you're, you. It looks like you're singing in a garage or a basement, and then mm -hmm. you look back at Unstoppable. It looks like you're singing outside your garage. So you do a lot of that at home. Yeah, well, the '80s. Uh, I'm sorry, the Unstoppable video. That was just outside at a place out in the country, and and the uh, it was kind of like a barn in in the background. And uh, the uh, yeah, the one we did a soundstage. Two it was two locations. The soundstage was where we were performing. But uh, we had like rented gear, and uh, it's. Uh, I did a newer music video. Maybe ask the next question you're going to ask me <laughs> about uh, uh, for for Netflix. And this was very recently, and it came out in uh, the end of November. Uh, called uh, it's it's a song "Born to Fight," and it's uh, to promote their two most popular anime shows, uh, Baki and King and Ashura. And uh, the song's "Born to Fight," and it was the final song for for the album, but. Netflix reached out to me and asked if I could write so a song for them for this promotion. And uh, they, Lenny and I, my you know, guy, co of the touch, we came up with a song born to fight and recorded it and they loved it. And they did a music video with me and then clips from the cartoon uh, series, you know, the, the, those two I mentioned that are, it's like ultimate fighting kind of stuff. And, uh, but it's uh, animated. And, uh, there's it's a really cool video. It's right on, on stanbush.com. That's the one right at the top right now. Correct. Yes. And number one, that's the first song on the album. Yeah, it's, it's a great power track, but thank you. All right. Question number nine, real quick one. You have any plans to tour once the pandemic ends, if ever? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, um, I've been approached by uh, some places in Europe, uh, Spain also, uh, Germany, um, about uh, doing some stuff it, to see how things go. But hopefully this summer we'll be getting some shows going. Uh, it, it all depends on how quickly, you know, everything bounces back. Uh, now that we have the vaccines and uh, they're going to be, you know, it, it, hopefully within a few months it'll be uh, opened up again. Back, back to pretty much normal, I'm hoping. <laughs> so, oh, no kidding. I'm uh, very yeah. proud of my state. We've been rocking with the vaccines. We're not sure. going by the federal guidelines. We're just use, utilizing each county's health departments, and we're just we're rocking. Them. We have all of our uh, nursing home uh, clients. Every one of those is inoculated. Uh, my wife works higher education. She's got inoculated. So everybody's – we're rolling. So I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful for the future as far as that's concerned. That's great. That's excellent. All right. My last question before we start going into the audience. Uh, this is one just for me. Big part of your career is these plastic robots. Do mm -hmm. you yourself have a Transformers collection? <laughs> Not really. Um, I have a, I have a few uh, upstairs and, uh, you know, still in their boxes and that, that have been given to me at conventions and whatnot. Uh, but no, I, I'm not really a collector. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I said one day. I, I have to too small. I, I don't even have, I got like three guitars and that's it. A lot of guys <laughs> I know have like, you know, 30 of them or something. I've never collected things. I, I'm not a collector type of person, really. I, I have what I need and that's, that's it, you know. Yeah, it's funny. So many times I'll think about it. I've got some, all this stuff over here. And it's just, it just sits there, but I wouldn't get rid of it now for nothing. Especially now, <laughs> I know a little one's downstairs just drooling, waiting at the chance to get those. Mm -hmm. Well, that wraps up my questions. I know I wanted to keep this short. We didn't want to go too long with uh, this interview. And I'm going to go into the chat now. And if anyone has any questions for Stan, first off, I'm going to apologize if I miss some of you guys. But now's the time to ask. 
Oh, Kato just said that uh, you don't collect Transformers, you collect fans. Oh, that's really <laughs> nice. That's great. All right, let's see what we have here. There we go. We love you, Stan. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. Love you too. I think what how this works, it takes a while for them. They'll comment on YouTube and it takes a while to jump over on here. Oh, here we go. What guitars does Stan Bush use? Well, I have a PRS. Uh, it's, it's actually the uh, Korean model that's cheaper and it's just as good as the PRS pretty much that you would buy for a lot of them for two grand and you can get it for 600 bucks. I have that and I have a Strat. Um, and then my acoustic guitar is my main thing. I mean, that's, I bought it new in 76 and it's, uh, it's an amazing sounding guitar. I write all my songs on it. It's a Martin, an older Martin. So yeah. Nice. Uh, here we go. This is going back to the anime again where I just lost it. Oh, here we go. These things move by so fast. Do you remember the song you did for sailor moon back in the nineties? Oh Yeah. Uh, she's got the power. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's funny cause people, a lot of people ask me about that. They say, Oh, you sang Sailor Moon. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of those things that kind of called me at the spur of the moment. And I went in and sang on the trans on the, uh, not trans the, uh, Sailor Moon. Uh, it was like a, sa a soundtrack album. And, uh, anyway, but yeah. You know, when I was first collecting or list buying music for myself, my own money, I always bought soundtracks because I can always get a variety of music. Let's see. I uh, might know the answer to this one. Who's your favorite Transformers character? Bumblebee. Bumblebee. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, this is nice right here. You're an inspiration to not just me, but to everyone. Keep being awesome. Oh, nice exactly. That's so nice. Thank you. Uh, here's someone asking, do you keep in contact with Peter Cullen? I've met him several times over the years and he's always been incredibly nice, uh, at, you know, with the conventions and so forth, but I, I don't know him well, but I've, uh, he's always been really nice when I've met him. So when I see him. Uh, here's, I lost it again. Somebody was asking about Cobra Kai. Here it is. I just started watching that show. That's a great 80s throwback it's show. A cool show. Yeah, I like it too. Just wrapped up season one myself. You have okay. been, have you been approached to write any music for Cobra Kai since it's so much, since they deal with so many 80s songs? No, but I'd love to. Uh, hopefully uh, that'll happen at some point. Yes, that's Netflix. I mean, come on, Netflix. I know, I write. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I might see about that. See if I can pursue something in, oh, on that line. But uh, let's see. Oh, here, here's the flip side of the coin. Who's your favorite Decepticon? Oh wow, uh, I don't know, honestly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I don't really have an answer. See, that, that, you played that well. That way you don't offend anybody who's, you know, Megatron fan, Starscream fan. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I do. I can say one quick thing, and that's that something's coming up very soon in the next week or so. Uh, and just be watching. It's uh, And it's going to involve what we've been talking about. And, nice. Uh, just and check. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Just check StanBush.com, and you'll see. It's, uh, it's it's involving Netflix and uh, anyway. Nice. Let's see here. Who is your favorite band to tour with? Oh boy, um, I don't know. I think my favorite, one of my favorite bands is is uh, well, back back in the day was the the original Foreigner, the the early Foreigner stuff. Uh, that's that stuff's great and. Uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of uh, I don't know too many modern bands, that, uh, but I I really like I've always liked uh, Zeppelin and uh, you know uh, the we Eagles. Can't go wrong with them. Yeah, that's right. But, uh, it's just just a lot of stuff. Uh, now here's somebody asking, do you own any Transformers T-shirts? He almost put one on for the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I almost did. I got I got a few of them. <laughs> 
All right, here we go. There's Rodimus Primal's on here, making sure that everybody knows to go to stanbush.com to pick up this album. <laughs> oh, that's great. Great guys. I've met all these guys through YouTube. It's just, it, it's blown my mind. Like I said, this community is great. Now we're at the 30 minute mark and I promised you we would end this at 30 minutes and we're going to do that. So you can go and spend some time with your family and have dinner. Uh, once again, Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. I am just humbled that you came on my little channel and it, it just made my night. Like I said, you've been a big part of my life since I was 11 years old. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate the support. Really do. Oh, not a problem. And as I always say in my videos, does a copy of Dare to Dream belong in your collection? Absolutely. Stanbush.com. That's where you can find it. It's also on Amazon or any other online media retailer from what I can tell. Great CD. All the songs are top notch. I've been listening to this constantly since I bought it. So check it out, guys. You are not going to be disappointed. And Stan, so thank you once again for coming on the show. All the best. Thank you now. Take all care. Right. And guys, I appreciate you all in the chat for checking me out. Uh, this is Patriot Prime signing out. Hoo-ah! <laughs> Take care. See you later. <laughs>